<laughs> Welcome everyone in this video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video we are going to learn how to install MCE. But first off I wanted to thank you for purchasing MCE and supporting me. Uh, but with no further ado, let's dive right in. So uh, you might have downloaded MCE through the itch.io, in which case you're going to have some, something like this. Uh, and maybe you've downloaded it through the marketplace and in this case you have something like that. So if you install to engine, it's going to add a folder to your uh, Unreal Engine Plugins Marketplace uh, folder, uh, which is the place where you've installed MC um, Unreal. So it's going to create a folder here. You want to cut that and to move that away. Maybe store that in a folder uh, on the side. Uh, to get something like this. So you're going to end up with a folder containing MCE uh, outside of uh, the Unreal Engine. And you want to do this because you don't want to, you want to install um, MCE project by, by project and not in your engine, which makes it, which shares it among all your projects. And you have, you have some settings you want to keep project uh, dependent. So that's why you want to keep uh, MC away from the engine installation. So once you've, once you have MC here, you're going to copy that and to paste that in your project folder. So first up, create a new folder in your project folder. So this is the, the, the project you want to install MC in. I recommend you to install MC in a blank project uh, to start just to, to see what's what's going on and also because we're going to to download and to add all the example content I created for MC to, to the project we are working on here. So you might not want to add that kind of content to to one of your main projects. And uh, this project this this tutorial project is the it's just a third person example uh, template demo uh, based off Unreal. And, but you can you can use any 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 template. It's the same. So in your project folder, let's create a new folder called plugins. And in in here, let's copy and paste uh, the multiplayer combat editor. And once you've done that, you also want to download the example project, which you can find on the main page of the multiplayer combat editor by downloading the example content here. It's going to give you a build and a project, and you want the build. So, I'm work in this video. I'm working on 4.20, but the all the, the steps are the same for uh, any Unreal version. So, it's downloading the example content is going to give you this, and you want to grab example and graphics, which are all the skills, pickups, weapons, etc. I created using MC to showcase the base features. And we're going to install this to the blank project we are working in. So let's add this to our content, like this, copy and paste. And then we also want to copy and paste the tags, the gameplay tags we are using, like magic, fire, frost, and stuff like this. And in order to do this, you want to go to config and copy and paste tags uh, from the example content to your to our tutorial project. So that's what we want to do. And we also want to make our projects uh, multiplayer compatible. What does that mean? We want to enable hosting and searching session on the local area network. And other videos will. Uh, will walk, walk you through making your project Steam, de Steam enabled. But for now, we're just going to make it uh, local area network enabled. So open up default engine.ini and add something along the line of, uh, I can't type in online subsystem. Okay, I know why. I'm sorry about the sound. I'm sorry about the sound. Uh, online subsystem default platform service equals null. And this is going to enable a local area network, as I was saying. And we also want to add some C class to our project just so 
just so it compiles and packages properly. And for that, you want to download Visual Studio, the free Visual Studio community to 2017. You want to download this. And once you've downloaded and installed it, installed it you can, we will be able to do what we want to do. Uh, what I mean by that is adding some C++ class. So I think we are almost good to start up our project. So we're going to double click this and it's going to ask for a compilation. Yes. And it's going to compile. Uh, it's supposed to do, it's not supposed to throw any errors at that point. And at any point, actually. Adding the C++ class will make us able to pack to include the proper dependencies to package our project. So for instance, if you want to produce a .exe, an application out of your project, you want to include the proper dependencies. So that's why we need to uh, enable C++ in the project. Uh, after restart, after starting the project for the first time, you don't want to open anything. You want to, we're going to enable the plugin, uh, which is a built-in and Unreal plugin, which everyone has. And it's going to enable some of the properties within MC. And if we don't, and if we don't uh, enable that, that plugin, if we open up some stuff related to MC, uh, it's going to throw some errors and we don't want that. So we want to go to plugin. Uh, make sure multiplayer combat editor is enabled. If it's not, just check it and do not restart yet. Just type in, in Apex, go to built-in, Apex destruction. You want to enable this and it's going to ask for a restart of the editor and you want to restart. Uh, it's, it's, this is going to be for the destructible meshes which is a feature built in Unreal and which MC uses to for stuff like destructible barrels and stuff like this. So we are almost good to start uh, taking a look at the different examples I provided with MC. But first we need to enable some stuff in our project settings, which is about the stencil. Uh, what what is what is this? This is the outline and the out the inline and the outline of the elements. For instance, when you move you, when you over your cursor over an an item, uh, you want to have an outline of a specific color. And if we want to enable this, we need to check that enabled with stencil. Uh, look up for stencil and enable it with stencil. Now we want to create a new C++ class just for the dependencies sake, like I was saying, add new. We want to add a new C++ class, which is going to be, for instance, uh, a, blueprint, a blueprint function library. Just in case uh, at some point in your game, you want to add some function which are usable in every of your blueprints, you're going to have one uh, set up. We're going to call this my game function, uh, my game blueprints library, and we want to click public, private, and public, and we want to create that class. And I think after that, we're just going to need to set up the inputs of the example characters and we will be good to take a look at the example map. Okay, so it compiled. Uh, we're just going to check something uh, in our main. So it opened up Visual Studio automatically and it's taking some of the resources of my computer. But we want to go to project settings, gameplay tags, and in there we want to make sure that you want to make sure that you have character, first person, magic, etc. All this, all this stuff, it has been imported when we copied, copied and pasted uh, the gameplay tags. So now it's there and it's usable by 
uh, the different elements of our game. And you, you will, there will be some, there is a video about how you can add stuff to that. So it compiled our, it compiled the project. Uh, we can see everything is, is started here on Visual Studio. We want to, we want to go there to install MCU project uh, to source, install MC target, and after install MCE here, we want to include two other things. We want to include the multiplayer combat editor, and we want to, to include online subsystem. So, as you can guess, what does it say? It says that when you package the game, you want to package the multiplayer combat editor, and you want to package everything related to the, lo the local area network with it. So that's why we are bringing, bringing this here. So like this, and I think we are fine. We can go to build, uh, build solution. And it's going to compile real fine in, th in theory. And while it's compiling, we can go back to our project and we can check out what's called the example folder, which I will bring into details in another video, but we can go into character, player, and we want to go to FPS player, and it's going to lag a bit because it's loading a lot of assets. While compiling in the same time. And I think the, the editor might not like it. Uh, we are opening this character to double check what are the inputs we need to be creating. So the movement inputs of the example characters are named keyboard move forward. So we want to create that in our project. So let's go to project settings. Inputs. Action mapping. Axis mapping. We want to rename, we don't want to rename this. If we rename this, the, the example character is not going to work. So we want to add another, a new axis mapping, which is going to be keyboard move forward. And we want another one, which is going to be keyboard move right. And now we're going to add keys and how do we move forward? We move forward using W and we move backward using S and we move right using D and we, we move left using A like this. So this is going to be scaled by minus one and this is going to be scaled by minus one. So now if we compile our FPS player, it's going to say that this exists and you're going to need to do the same thing for uh, the gamepad if you want to check out the example content with the gamepad. But for this example tutorial, we're just going to use the keyboard. So now we need to go to map, example map, and it's going to load a bunch of things. And one of the last things we need to uh, set up in this project are the collision settings, because there is something uh, there is there is something particular with the collisions uh, you need to set up for MC to work properly, in in the sense that sometimes you want a collision to to overlap and some other time you want a collision to block. So if you hit play, you're supposed to have no errors. You can play with the client character. You can move around and you can hit, uh, you can hit some stuff. And the enemy is not taking damage. And that's because uh, the collision settings are not properly set up, but we're going to fix this. So you can switch team using plus just for the sake of testing. So I'm dealing damage to that character. Uh, back to the collision settings. Uh, if, I, if I'm learning that frost beam and if I'm hitting that character, we can see, mm -hmm, to demonstrate my idea, 
let's suppose this laser stops at the first target it hits. Uh, in this case, if I'm on the same team than the other player here, I want my laser to, to, to pass through him, him. But if I'm on the blue team, I want the laser to, to hit him and stop on and stop whenever it hits him. And in this case, we need, and for that, we need the, colli the battle collisions to, to usually overlap with uh, the, the different uh, query channel we use. And, but sometimes you, want, you just want it to block, for instance, like the walls in here, it's blocking. So to demonstrate that, we're just going to go in our project settings collisions, presets. We want to say that the pawn is actually overlapping with the visibility. We want to say that the character mesh is actually overlapping with the visibility. And it's going to properly, in theory, we are going to be able to deal damage to the enemy now. And that's how you want to set up your collisions. If you want your, if you want an actor to to take damage from uh, MC components, you want him to overlap with your collision channel. And he, he can block. He can also block. But if at some point your your character, if at some point you want some projectiles or some skills to ignore your character and pass through your character. You want your character or your actor to overlap with the the collision channel used by MC components, which you can set up uh, somewhere. It's going to be explicit. It's going to be told in another video. So this video was about uh, installing uh, MC into your project and installing the example content uh, for you to try out. So feel free to try everything out. And if you're wondering uh, what to do next, uh, I can give you uh, some hints, the ideas, uh, two ideas. You could be starting uh, to, to watch the series of tutorials named um, under the playlist Create Your Character, or you could dive right away in the different, in the different part of MC uh, into, into my playlist. There are lots. For instance, you can check everything about the Action Manager, the Combat Manager, uh, the skill manager, etc., and you can, or you can start to follow that series of tutorial, which is using videos from every other playlist. So this is how you can start diving in in MC, but don't it, don't expect it to be too easy. There are a lot of things, and you should you should be ready to to work and to learn how to use all its components. And of course, you need some multiplayer background if you want to properly set up everything. So I think that's all for that video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the future videos. Bye-bye. Uh,